Air Force is a very uh, dynamic arm, and without the support of the Air Force, I think the integrated battle groups uh, are not going to be very successful in the battle. In fact, uh, the Air Force can act as a very big force multiplier by bringing down heavy uh, fire on the enemy, by supporting the recce and surveillance and other operations. And the integrated battle groups will require the support of the Indian Air Force. Now, as far as the Air Force is concerned, you see, they are they have got a very uh, a very flexibility is one of the biggest principles. Decentralization of their of the resources is one of the biggest principles. So though they have a centralized control, decentralization is effective. And at the core level, you have an Air Force representative which, who will be able to manage the resources from top, from the central headquarters, as well as meet the requirements of the integrated battle groups. In the next, uh, next you have uh, the forward air controllers or the air control, the air force representatives who will be going with the forward marching troops or the forward troops who will be there with the IBGs and with that being there with the IBGs, I think the air force will get very closely integrated. But they have to be integrated in the IBGs for uh, a sure shot success in the future. The wars which are going to take place now or in future are going to be multi-domain. It means they'll be on surface, in the air, in cyber space and underwater domain together. As such, like for instance, Army operates on surface but flies air assets like UAVs and helicopters. Air Force essentially uses the air medium but has assets on ground like the command centers, air defense assets and the like. So as such, air power and the uh, Army formations will act in unison in sync and in concert with each other to create condition for maneuver which is not going to be rather deep for these IBGs and create conditions where these maneuvers are not interfered or the interference if it is taking place is destroyed. So there will be a, a coordinated plan between ground forces and air part together and this plan will be jointly evolved jointly uh, planned and jointly executed. In, in advanced countries and also in, in case of uh, China, for example, air forces are very uh, closely associated with uh, the ground formations. Uh, but nowhere are they at, at, at the level of brigades and divisions, they are not under command. Except that at the level of divisions in America and in some other Western countries, the air element in the form of attack helicopters and the recce and surveillance helicopters are part of the division. In case of India, I do not think that except for uh, reconnaissance elements uh, in, in terms of presently Cheetah and Chetak, which are going to be replaced by some other helicopter, and probably at a later stage, uh, some Apaches when they uh, come in, which they can only be in support of some IBCs, not on all IBCs, because only six are uh, being imported for uh, the Army. Uh, air element, basic air support has to basically come from Air Force itself so far. But however, how this can happen uh, is uh, through uh, planning uh, at the core level, uh, also involving the procedures, the communications uh, and the planning process. When these processes and equipment are integrated at these levels, I think that's, that is when uh, an integration of that nature can come in. But I don't think an air element will be under command of an IBG.